Book of Luke chapter, chapter, chapter 8. Book of Luke chapter 8. Amen. This is a wonderful day. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God a praise today. This is a wonderful, wonderful day. Amen. amen. I was glad when they say unto me, let us go in the house of God. Amen. amen, amen. It's a wonderful day. Yeah. Amen, Pastor Joseph. Yeah. Wonderful day. Amen. It is a wonderful day. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. We want to give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. You see that the Lord is good. And that is what? Mercy endured forever. Mercy is endured forever. Amen. 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 I thank God for, amen, for every one of you that made it. Amen. I thank a lot of rebellion in the house of God. There's stubbornness in the house of God. There is, amen. there is, oh my God. Amen, amen. There is so much things that going on in the people's lives in the house of God. I was talking about something this morning about the children of Israel mm -hmm. and how God had to provoke them to godly jealousy. Mm -hmm. God provoked them. I talked to my wife about it. Amen. About how God had provoked them to godly jealousy. Mm -hmm. Then when I came to church, then Mr. John started talking to me about the children of Israel and how God had to provoke them to godly jealousy. It's too much of a double and triple stuff going on in one day. Amen? Come on, somebody. God is so awesome. I mean, it's just so awesome. It's like everything becoming double and triple. This got to be the year of recovery. Come on, somebody. Amen? This got to be the year of recovery. We thank God this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning, God. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you, God, that you will establish your word in this place. Now, Lord, expand yourself in me, Lord. Speak to your people, God. Give boldness and courageousness. Father God, give me courage, oh God, to speak what thus says the Lord. Father God, I thank you, God, Father. But you have made me and not me myself. I did not, I was not a part of your creation. But Father, I thank you for you have chosen me. Thank you, Lord, your hands upon my life. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, speak to your people. Speak to your people, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, and the people God say, in the book of Luke, <coughs> chapter 8. Chapter 8, it talks about, in verse 5, it says, A soul went out to sow. A soul went out to sow his seed, and, and as he went to sow, some fell by the wayside, and it was shot than the feet, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Verse 6 says, And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, and because it lacked moisture. Verse 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, with it, and choked it. Another fell on good grounds, and sprung up, and bare fruit, a hundredfold. And when he said these things, he cried, He that had ill, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might these parables be? What might these parables be?
If I may use for a cushion, then I will, I will say that let's talk about the wisdom of life. Obviously, if it's so open out the soul, some seeds gonna fall where they ought to be, and some gonna fall where they not ought to be. Well, we live in a life. We live in a world today where sometimes we know where we ought to be, but we choose other places. We choose other destinies destinations. We choose. We know what's good for us. We choose. We know water is good. But we don't choose water all the time. Amen. Sometimes we choose coke. Amen. 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 You know you're thirsty. You know your body need water. But you still go for the coke. The coke. Come on somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I'm being delivered from the cook. We all know what we need. Amen. Come on. Amen. We all know that there's some things going to happen when we go the other way. I know if I do certain things, it's going to be bring forth certain results. Amen. A reaction brings forth a reaction. Amen. 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 So here it is, the Bible speaks about the soul went out to soul, and some fell on the wayside, and some was trodden under feet. Hmm. And after Jesus would speak these words, after Jesus would have spoken these parables, verse 9 says, And his disciples asked him, What might these parables be? Really, I really would like to know what these parables may be, but let's stick to the word. Verse 10 says, And he said, Unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables. But to you, children of God, you will know the mystery of these parables. In other words, God is saying that because you are mine, you will understand what I'm saying about this, about some fell by the wayside. The parables, the parables, you will know. But to others, it will be, it will be a strange thing that you're saying. It will be something strange that you just don't uh, understand. But when the Spirit of God is in you, the Spirit of God revealed to you understanding that you will know the mysteries of the kingdom. Amen. And these disciples, they were attentive because they really want to know. But this is what Jesus continued in saying, says, that you may know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others parables that seeing that they may not see and hearing that they may not understand. Amen. Which the devil says, now the parable is this. The sea is the word of God. Amen. The sea is the word of God. In this parable, the seed is the word of God. There is times when the word of God will, the word of God will come direct. In my experience, even as a leader, as a pastor, and I realized that even if you were to reveal to people that there is a ditch if you step to the left, that does not prevent them from going to the left. Amen. So, and here it is. Having word knowledge doesn't necessarily prevent you from experiencing sometimes a downfall because people will get informed and so 
act as though they are not informed. Amen. So here it is. Verse 12 says, Those that fell by the wayside, they, those that fell by the wayside, uh, they that hear, I wonder if you have your Bible today, because I, I really want you to follow this up. Say, so they that fell by the wayside are they that that hear. Then cometh the devil and take it away the word from out of their heart. Least they should believe and be saved. There are some things that that God will open us up to and make us feel informed and give us the give us the revelation, give us what we need to know. And we still sometimes allow ourselves to, to fall right in that ditch. Ever been in a situation where you just I mean, you said, if I only did know, if I only did know, I would have made a better choice. Are you sure? You sure you would have made a better choice? Because if God was to speak right now and trying to say things, we still will proceed on course and not shift. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's read verse 13. Say, they that on the rock, when they hear, they receive the word with what? With joy. And these are they that has no root. For a while they believe. Come on, you ever meet people that man they would rejoice that word, they got this word, man, that word is so good today. What a wonderful word, wonderful word. Come on, say wonderful word. Wonderful word. You see, there is there you see, there are different categories of people in the house of God. Amen. Different categories that even though we like the concept and think that we all think the same. We all don't think the same. We all don't react the same. Amen. And you know, we, we, you know, people will say that we all, oh, I'm a child of God and God can bless me too. If God bless him like that, God can bless me too. Yeah, but, but, but you see, this scripture showed us there's a different category right here because there's some that we see the word, but at the same time, these ones that received the word but didn't have the depth. In other words, these are the ones that didn't understand, didn't build a relationship, has no relationship with God. Amen. And they has no depth in the word, there's no depth in God, has no relationship with God. You see, the less you know about God, the greater you're down for. Because every born again believer every born again believer has something that he has to go through every born again believer has an experience amen, amen. every house that ever been built go to seasons amen. they go to a sunny season where the sun shine upon the house and heat the house they go to a season where the snow fall and and the snow land on the house and go to a season where the rain comes and the rain beat on the house and go to a season where the wind blow and they blow and the rain and the wind and the rain and the wind and the flood come. Amen. But it's always the house that has the depth. It's always the house that has the, the right foundation. It's always the foundation that holds the house together. It never know how beautiful the house is. Amen, amen. It's never the pink that is on the wall. Amen. It is never the Spanish window or the Italian windows or, or the great coins on the corner of the house. It's always 
the foundation Amen. that kept the house. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Sometimes we don't understand why we still standing. Why we are still standing, you know, because you pass through a lot of different seasons. You pass through a season when you could have left that like many have walked out of the faith. But you did not. You had a season when things were really not good and you you had the excuse to faint. But you refused to faint. You know, sometimes you would say to anyone, well, you know, uh, well, you know, I don't know if I'm going to faint. Yes, you know if you're going to faint. You see, to not faint in a faithless situation is to build your innermost faith for the time when you shall become weak. Amen. You see, and this is where the depth comes from the foundation. See, this is where the foundation is. Amen. The foundation prepares you for what Amen. will come in the future. You can put a house of straw and will stand for a moment. But foundation always keep you to the future. It will always keep you standing. It's something I love in the scripture, what Jesus said. Jesus said, Peter, upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Upon this rock, yes, Lord. I build my church. You see, when we look at the power of the soul, we're looking at something that God has given to us as, as a method. We must choose how we're gonna we're gonna choose how we're gonna be in this life. You're going to be the seed that fell on stony grounds. You're going to be that seed that when the, the birds of the fowl of the air comes and, and just pick you up. When folk are going to come to just tell you any kind of thing about your religion. You see, I'm very cautious when I come to people that has that have been to so many different religions. And not that they only be in so much different religion. It's it's that they every religion they step into they were fully they or they taught that they was full committed and serious. But what caused you to change from your first persuasion? Amen, amen. You see, it shows me that the foundation, even when you were first be persuaded that your foundation was not deep. Amen, amen. The Bible tells us that we must hold fast yes. to that which we first believe. Amen. It doesn't matter who comes with whatever they say and how they say it, no matter how fancy the words may be. My foundation is so deep. That I'm fully persuaded. Amen. You'll be able to move my house because my debt to my house goes deep. Amen. Amen. So there's some plants that we may be aware of that goes that take a long time to grow. Amen. To have a full growing coconut tree will take you as much as five years minimum. It take you that it take a tree to that character that much years is because while they sit in the ground and and they will sit to the ground three years four years Amen. and it will be just a small little tree at four years old they still small Amen. but what we are missing is that. The revelation of that tree. 
that tree before that goes up into the air it's getting root in the ground Amen. and this is what God wants God wants God want us to, to get the root in the ground because the height that we're going to go is going to be so high you see, God wants us to get to the place where we can stand against cross winds. Yeah. You see, is anybody in the see? We everybody wants to be blessed. Everybody wants something. You know, it's awesome. Jesus. But do we have the depth for the awesomeness and the anointing that God yeah. wants yeah. to bestow upon your life? Are yeah. yeah. your depth is lying lining up? Because if you can't handle the wind that blows with the sunshine, how you, you can handle the wind that comes with the rain? Oh my oh, amen. See, a lot of people don't think with rain, a rain can be just as destructive as the wind. Amen. Because when the rain comes, it takes the earth amen. from around the root. Amen, amen. And again, if you don't have the depth again, because the, once the earth is moved away, you are next, you are exposed. And if you be exposed, Amen. And if this depth is not there, you are rooted up. You see, God wants us to get to the place where we can be so grounded. You know, I have experienced that people. There are some people, there's a lot of people that love me, there's a lot of people that love me. There's a lot of people that love me. It's a blessing. Amen. But you know what? There are some people that don't love me. You see, we can get fooled thinking that everybody do love you. Hmm. Everybody do love Jesus. What I'm trying to show you here is that there is some, there are some people that can come into your park. They can come into your space. Amen. Not everybody that in your space is gonna put some moisture around you and give you nutrients Amen. for your root. Amen. There are some people that's gonna come into your space. Jesus. Just to contaminate your soul and pluck you up. You only saying that thing here today. We're going to see the scripture yes. where there's also some. With seven. Can someone read some seven? What it says? It says some fell among thorns. And they sprung up. <laughs> they sprung up with it. They sprung up with you. They come up with you. And they choke you. Amen, amen. You see, what caused the thorns to come up along with the tree, that the fruitful tree? You see, there are some things that will choke us in this life. Because you know why? We are we are mingling with those that are not of the same faith. We have a good guy that works with us. He is such a good guy, but you know, he's not saved, but he's my friend. He's my friend. I'm not saying not to be a friend, not to be friendly, not to be loving. Mm -hmm. We want to be loving, we want to be kind, but we ought to know the difference. Amen, amen. We ought to know the difference because why? Because here it is, you are so entangled with something that, that, that causes you to, to be engrafted into the worldly system. That you can't, oh, with the, with your faith, with your God, and pray to your God. And what do we pray to our God is this: Our God teaches patience. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Our God teaches patience. Yes. Some of the folk in your space, they're not drawn by patience. Hmm. They're drawn by logics. This is logical. Come on, let's be logical here. Yes. Come on. <clears throat> so here it is now. We got two premises in one space. And you will get, you will find yourself becoming very impatient. 
Because why? Because everybody else is moving and it appears like ain't nothing happening for you. So you got to the place now, you are to the place now where you begin, where you become to be choked. Did this word really work? Jesus. Is this really working? Jesus. Because why? We are looking at another system. Yes, yes. God. And this system that we are looking at is not based on God's word. Amen, amen. And because this principle is not based on God's word, we now, the cares of this life, buggle in our minds. And we find ourselves, this is why we find ourselves, you know, we find ourselves this, we look at just like them and, and they are looking like themselves and we are looking like them. Jesus. Really, and when we supposed to be the pace setters, yeah. Man, there's man. no one look like me. Man. Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. I stand out. Man. And, I, and I make sure that I stand out every day. I stand out with everything I do, everything I say, my style I stand out because why? Because I am a seed Amen. of God. Yes. When they hire people to work, when they hire people to work for me, I have a problem. You know why I have a problem? Let me tell you what this problem is. The problem is that every time I hire somebody to work for me, they always try to look like me. That's a real problem I have. Jesus. Always have the problem. I have this guy, I put it in the, in the cinema door. He came in looking like himself. One week later, I saw him and I thought it was me. Understand what I'm saying? Amen. This is what we ought to do. We ought to, we ought to cause people Amen. to want to be you. Not you want to be them. Amen. Am I talking to you today? Amen. Well, this is what the this is a problem in the church because why? Because we got some folk in chapter in verse seven. It says, "But fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them." These are fast as thorns sprung up. Amen. Some people will come in your space and they will get you. They will learn some things from you, but they wouldn't tell you. And they will go and come back and like they are it. Amen. Act like they are. And you wanna how did that happen? And they ain't gonna tell you they bought it from you. Right. Amen. Or you already say nothing. Amen. They came into your space and they got your ideas. Jesus. Jesus. You see, sometimes you know we can be so trusting. We can be so trusting, we can trust everybody, and we can tell everybody our secret. Amen. Oh, you you my good friend. Don't forget now, you've been getting something very important. You can get down. They are off the world. Yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. And you can find so much things and so much good ideas, and, and they even tell you, so, "Wow, this is a good idea. You know, you get a wonderful idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me try to help you push this idea." No, they're gonna go and they're gonna say, "Well, I'm gonna see." Now you might see me for a couple of months, but you're still my friend. And while they're out of your sight, they are working on that idea. Jesus. And so you know what? When she see me again, I'm going to be so large. Mm -hmm. But the Bible speaks in verse 8. What the verse 8 says, it says that, And others fell on good grounds. Others fell on good grounds. Say, and when they sprung up and bear fruit, they not only just bear fruit. They were so prosperous, they became so prosperous. Because these are the fruit that took their time and grew. Amen, amen. 
this is a tree that you thought never was going to be anything. This is a tree that was that was stuck at a small state amen. for so long. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. You know, I begin to understand why Paul said this. Paul said, I will be content. Whatever state I'm in. You see, it's not that you are so content that you're not thinking about progress, being uh, 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 progressive or uh, succeeding. You are you are content to the state whereby that you trust in the God yes. of your salvation. Amen. You trust in God. Like Job says, even though they slam it, yet will I trust him. Amen. I will trust God. I will trust the God. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. Yes. yes, I will wait for my change. I will wait until my change come. Do you know the contentment? To be content is a game. You know what can stress? You know what can stop your stress right now? It's one thing you can do right now, and automatically all your stress gone. Every stress. Every stressful situation that you may be in, every disease that you may have, will be wiped away out. Mm-hmm. And if we can get to this place where we can trust in God so much, believe that the God is well able mm-hmm. to do abundantly more. Than what you may even ask, think, or even imagine. Mm-hmm. If we just could think about this God to be so great and so awesome and, 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 and refrain from trying to work it out yourself. Amen, amen. You know, I learned a little while ago that trying to make a name for myself, now the world does that, you know. Mm-hmm. The world tells you how you can get out there. And how you can, how you can build yourself up. Amen. The world tells you how you can do that. That's logic. Amen. But you know what? I learned something. I learned something here. Because I learned something from the scripture when God says, promotion comes along from the east, not from the west. Amen. Thank you, God. I learned when you, when you wait on the Lord. When you wait on God. Mind you, there's a lot of people came up behind me. And they are gone. But I'm still, I'm still just waiting. I'm just waiting on God. Trusting in Him. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not woman or I don't have the same concern, but I learn not to frustrate. I learn not to do something that works against my health. I learned to do something that, 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 that works yes. against my real being. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. You see, all of these stuff just, just, just cause your body to, to malfunction. Yes, yes, amen. Because God never intended you to strain. Because I learned something from the, from the yes, nature yes. Yes. that God had placed upon us on this yes, beautiful yes. earth. Amen. You can drop a seed any place. And even if they just spring to die, it's going to come forth. Come on, somebody. I learned something from a grass. You can plant a grass, and you do even have to water it, and it just come forth. So, if, if, if nature can produce something like that, then when God says something, when God's hands is upon your life, when the hands of God is on your life, Come on, somebody. No matter what comes shine, rain, no matter what, it's going to be the way the Creator said it shall be. Amen. Hallelujah. I learned something from the book of Genesis. When God saw Dr. Wilson upon the face of the deep, and the earth was out without form and void, and He said, Come, Amen. let us. God created the world. He gave the world form. And he said that he saw there was good. 
He said, let there be light, and it was so. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. The timing of everything came together. Amen. So, I am God's creation. Come on, somebody. Yes. You are God's creation. We ought not to be like the seed that was fell by the wayside. We are not the wayside seeds. You are not wayside seeds, no. Amen. You are the seed that fell on good grounds. Yes, Lord. Amen. Good grounds. And you want to tell yourself that. I'm, uh, I'm in good grounds. Amen, amen, amen. You see, the revelation of the word today is that because you are on such a good ground, you have a lot of thorn to worry about. Yes, Lord. Thorns has to worry about you because why? Because you're going to pluck up the thorns as you see them. There's a thorn that grows you, yes. Say, let the wheat and the tares grow together, and the day of harvest is she what? Angels. You can read them out, but yeah. this is my day of harvest. I'm meeting on every thorn in my life. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Look at your name and say, this is my day of harvest. My day of harvest. Amen. Jesus. There are some thorns you got to take out. Amen. There are some thorns in our life. You got to look around and see what's what's there, and we got to take some thorns out because if you don't take the thorns out, you know what's going to happen? One day we're going to be sleeping. <laughs> and the thorns, I mean, if we continue to let these thorns grow around us, Amen. they are growing up around us, and they're going to grow around our necks. Amen. And what the Bible says about the thorns, say the thorns, what it did? Choke. The, the thorns would spring up and choke you. Amen. We don't need this to be happening to us because we get too much death in us. There's too much worry in our life. We get too much worry. Yes, yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. Yes, Jesus. You get enough word in your life to transform you right now. Amen. There is enough word in you. Amen. To electrocute every devil. Amen. 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 Oh, you're only saying nothing. Amen. I like that. Not the mosquito. Amen. You get enough way that you electrocute every devil, Amen. every demon in the hell. Yes. will send a member out. Yes. They will send a member out in your name. Say, look out. Jesus. Look out for Pastor Joseph. Look out for the Minister Rowan. Look out for Minister Watson. There's a Out in hell right now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we look here. Demons will not go on earth. Look up for these men. Don't touch them. Amen. Stay as far as you can from them. Jesus. Because there's so much word in you. Amen. You see, I don't want you to think that the enemy doesn't feel lost when we bind him and cast out devils. Amen. When we call them powerless, they have. They experience loss yes. out of much greater loss than you feel your loss. Amen, amen. So this is the reason why when you become so aware of who you are and who you are, this is the reason why there has to be a meeting in hell somewhere. Jesus. Hmm. Somebody, somebody, some demon. Hmm. Just running away from me. You can imagine every time you go someplace, mm. the place clear it up. Jesus. You know you leave some people in the office. Or you know some people was gathered somewhere. <laughs> and the minute you show up, everybody gotta go. Scatter, scatter. You know why? There's nothing wrong about you. They know you got the word. They know you got the ammunition to destroy yeah, their purpose. Sorry, 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 sorry. You can imagine destroying the purpose of any organization. You think they're going to be around you and they know you are well aware of the equipment yeah. and the, the, the ammunition and the yeah, weapons yeah, of God. Yeah. Like the Bible says, for our weapons are not of this war, of, of this yeah. warfare is not carnal, but yeah, it's mighty, mighty to pulling out yeah. of the strongholds. Yeah. You can imagine. Yeah. Can you just imagine for a second yes, that the enemy knows that you are quite aware of that? Amen. He's not going to play around you. Yes, Lord. He's not going to trifle around you. Amen. Because if we can't take you in the blink, 
He don't stand a chance. Mm, amen, amen. He knows that. And you got to stand the people of God. You, yes, you got the yes, power yes, in yes, you. God yes, give you yes, so yes, much power. Yes, Jesus, yes, Lord. You are people of well informed. And this is how we destroy the enemy. We don't destroy the enemy by great, big, awesome, huge, among us, yes. service with thousands and thousands of people. Yes. You are an informed, even if it's only one on one. And yes. God gives you information to equip you. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are an informed people. We know who we are. Yes. We know who we are. We can call things that be not as they were. Come on, somebody. Amen. This is where we are right now. We are to the place where we know that we came on good grounds. We are good soil. Yes. Hallelujah. We are good soil. We come on good soil. Yes. We came on. God gave us this power. God gives us this information. Yes. Jesus. You know, what always makes the difference? What always makes the difference with the children of God? Amen. Always make the difference. Now there were some children that came up from Egypt. There were some that was murmuring. But don't forget, not all of them was murmuring. There were some of them that was murmuring, and there were some that were saying, shut your mouth. We are a people that's ready. Amen. We're ready to effect change. We're ready for change right now. Amen. And not only that, we are ready. We are making the change happen. Yes, Lord. We are making the change happen because why? Because even when we sleep, Amen. we are awake. Yes, Lord. Amen. Because our spirit, we begin to we we know so much of what God expects of us. We got this thing going on, whereby the enemy can sneak in. The Bible says us that we ought not to be afraid of a certain of certain threats. Because why? We are so informed and so aware. Yes, we know things yes, even before yes, it comes. Yes, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the warfare what's going on now. They they have I read I listened to um documentary. They now have this this war fighter that can can fly and it can fly over the enemy's territory and the radar can't pick them up. And if you look in the sky, you don't see it. It can be right over your head and you just don't see it. Jesus. This, and this is reality. If any nation has a weapon that can be over the enemy's head, undetected by radar. And you can't see it with your natural sight. Come on now. Amen. How much more power and equip we are? Yes. You see, an informed church, an informed people, yes. the enemy will not find you. Because why? You are transparent to the environment. Amen, amen. Yes. You're looking between seeing me. Come on, somebody. Amen, amen. You're trying to get my neck, but you can't find my body. Yes. You're only saying nothing. Yes. Hallelujah. We are so equipped. Because why? Because I put this whole armor. We got this armor, man. We got this armor as people, as the seed. The seed is the word. Come on, somebody. Yes. The word right now is being sown in your heart. We just the grounds. We got this word right now. This word is gonna take you in every country, nation, wherever we go. This word is gonna work. This word is gonna be so effective. This word is gonna cause us to survive. And every plot and every scheme. Every plot and every scheme that the enemy could strategize, yes, Lord. we are surpassing. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. As a matter of fact, we, the people of God, we are so beyond technology. Technology can't even reach the information yes. that God has already yes. distilled in His children. Yes. We ought to give God a praise yes. in His house. Yes, 
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. For our weapons. Amen. Amen. On the panel. But it's mighty. mighty. Through the pulling down of storm. But you think God, you think the enemy can allow himself or his imps to come and to come back. You can you cannot sabotage me. You cannot you cannot raid me because why? Because I have already foreknown Amen. your intentions. Amen. Come on, somebody. The Bible says the enemy comes with no new strategies. Don't you know that? Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that he comes with today, he have came to yesterday and the day before. He tried the same strategies. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come with the same thing. Come on, somebody. But you buy them up the same way, yes, the same old yes, way. Mm-hmm. And it collapsed. Yes, the yes. advanced technology that he had invented. No, you only say yes, nothing. Hallelujah. The same old word. The same old word yes, God gave yes. you. My God caused his advanced technology to collapse. You only say nothing. But this is the power that God has given us when we speak a word. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. When we would speak a word, the minute we would speak a word, the minute we would say, the minute we believe, and it shall be. It says, trying to choke me. But guess what? You was on good grounds. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I'm on good grounds. I'm on good grounds. That's what God wants us today. God wants us to, to be in form of where we stand. And today we are on good soil. We, we are good fruit, man. You are good people. You, you are good seed. And you fell in the right place. You fell in a place where you can only grow. You fall in a place where you can only be nurtured. You fall in a place where you can only be, come on somebody, where God can only advance you. You fall in a place where God himself lift you up. You're on good grounds. And today is, as we get ready to participate in the Lord's Supper, we are on good grounds. We are on good ground. You are a mighty people. Hallelujah. You know what's something we you know there's something we gotta stop doing? Stop waiting for someone else to validate you. Amen. Stop waiting for someone to say, Well, you do good. You Amen. ought to know you ought to know when something is good, when Amen. you did something good. Amen. You ought to stop waiting for you gotta stop waiting for someone to say, you know, to to make you feel special. You are special. You are so powerful. You are a powerful people. You are powerful people. You're going to have exactly what your expectations are. You're going to have exactly, you're going to meet your own expectations. And it comes from what you see in you. See yourself yes, as what God say that you are a great mighty warrior. Yes, Jesus. You are ready. Yes, Lord. You are ready to come back. You are ready yes, to chase devils. Yes, you are ready. You, yes. See, the thing is about this, you know what the thing is about this? We don't have to wait until our enemies show up Amen. to Amen. destroy them. Yes. We can destroy them. That will, yes. That plan is on our tomorrow. Yes, we can destroy yes, them today. Yes. Come on, somebody. Give God yes. a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Amen. You don't have to wait until you get down on your back yes. to say yes. that you are healed, delivered, set yes. free. You can yes. say today yes. that you are healed from every sickness yes. that the enemy yes. will try to impose upon you. Yes. That's how yes. powerful yes. you are. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why when you get down and get low for a second, you only stay down for a second because you already proclaimed it yesterday. Come on, somebody. I speak it for my yesterday. Oh, God, to affect my tomorrow. Come on, somebody. This is the reason why we got to know.
you the power of the now. Come on, somebody. Look at you and say the power of the now. The power of now prevents you from tomorrow's trouble. The power of now prevents you from next week's trouble. The power of now can shift you from every disaster. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy That's the power of now. Amen, amen. People of God, let's take advantage of our now. Yes. Now, 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 yes. God is. Jesus. Almighty, hallelujah. Now, God is. Now, faith is yes. the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. My results does not come from the evidence of the things that you saw yesterday. My results is of the yeah. things that I create in the now. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there are some yeah. things that I speak now that be not. Uh, there are some things that I know. There are some yeah. things that I know it will be close yeah. I'm speaking yeah. into my tomorrow. My tomorrow is so terrific. It's a fantastic super. My tomorrow, tomorrow is yeah. compact with the vow effect. Come on somebody. Say the vow effect is in my tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Oh, glory be to God. Mm -hmm. God knows. God knows there's some things. Uh, there are some things that we ought to see. There's some things uh, that we will taste and see. Because why? Because we believe in our now. We believe that God has given us the power of the our now to effect our tomorrow. Come on, somebody. We have to live in now to enable so we can enable our tomorrow. Come on, somebody. You better give God a praise today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is the reason. This would cause the effect of those that fell on stony grounds. Those that fell on stony grounds, they didn't have the chance. They don't have this. They never got to this level where you are. They never got to this level to get this word to know that they are so powerful. Come on, somebody. You got to know something. You got to know when you're good grounds. You got to know that this is your season. Come on, somebody. This is my season. I am going to exercise in this season. This season is going to be the, the first fruit of all the seasons to come in this life. Come on, somebody. Oh, my experience is going to be so great. My experience is going to be awesome. I'm going to have an awesome season. Come on, somebody. I'm going to have an awesome season. It's because why? The fruit of my lips. The fruit of my lips. The fruit of my lips says so. God has given me this. See, the problem is that you should have destroyed me yeah. when you had a chance. Yeah. Man, man. But now that I am a tree that bears fruits, come on, somebody. I can be, I'm now able to shoot some things. You only say nothing. I'm able to create some things. You only say nothing. I'm able to believe in myself. You only say nothing. I have faith. You only say nothing. Yes. You see, when I was small, you, when I was young in faith, I didn't have all of this knowledge. Yeah. But now I got this all. Now I got this. Amen. I got this. I got this. I got this. Come on, turn it over. I got this. Amen. Stop making noise because you're broke. Amen. Stop crying like you, like like they have all hope is lost. Jesus. That's okay. They didn't increase your salary. If they didn't increase your salary. Then you know what to do? You increase it yourself. Come on, somebody. Amen. You only say nothing. Amen. The pastor, how can I increase my salary? Amen. I don't work in HR. Mm -hmm. I'm not the manager. I authorize the salary, but the devil is a liar. But I can tell you one thing. See, your faith goes everywhere. Come on, somebody. Amen. Your faith can never take the faith start. Come on, somebody. You can take the pay stops and, and you can put whatever. Amen. You can increase your salary. Who can stop you? Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. They can hold you down, but they can't hold your spirit. Amen. Jesus said, you didn't take my life, I lay it down. Yeah. They can't kill you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. The most dangerous thing anybody can ever do is kill your dreams. Jesus. If you allow people to get that to the place where they can kill your dreams, then you are done. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because your dream is your intervention. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
If you can allow anything to interfere with your intervision, that's what keeps you going and coming. Yeah. That's what keeps you ticking. That's what keeps you hopeful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you got so much more than you. The vision keeps on coming. It's like a flood. Every time that one, boom, disappear. The next yeah. one appear. Come on, son. Yeah. Every time that one pays out, come on, son. Yeah. God coming with new strategies. God yeah. coming with something yeah. new. He shows you something yeah. new. Come on, somebody. Yeah. When every time the enemy thought you were dead, mm -hmm. yeah. God come and show you some life and tell you, arise, come on, get to your feet, stand to your feet. Come on, somebody. God, every time an enemy comes with something, God comes with something different. Whatever the enemy comes and tell you, mm -hmm. when the enemy comes and tell you something can't be done, God tell you that I want it done. No glory be to God. When the enemy comes and tell you you're weak, God come and tell you you're strong. Come 